Mr. Sanjeev Mehta. Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, CEO and Managing Director of Hindustan Unilever Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have all of you with us and thank you for joining us in this special session with one of India's foremost business leaders and management innovators. Sanjeev, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And in this session today, we're very grateful for that you've agreed to address a session in IMA's shaping, National Shaping Young Minds program. SYPM, as you are aware, is a collaborative effort between IMA and local management associations to inspire management students by allowing them to have a direct interaction with India's top achievers. We are privileged that you are with us to offer the audience your unique perspective on life and business and your potentially life-changing advice to at least some of the young people attending this program today. You have a somewhat different route to business leadership compared to most other Indian CEOs of multinationals whose typical path has gone round the route of IITs and IIMs. You did your bachelor's education in commerce and then obtained your license as a chartered accountant. You also did an advanced management program at the Harvard Business School. Your career, as I've been told, started off on a rough start with your first employer at Union Carbide and where you got bogged down by the infamous gas leak in Bhopal. But you developed great sensitivity to business social and environmental responsibility in the course of crisis management at the company. You moved on to Unilever and the rest is history, as, as one may say. You've been with the transnational FMCG giant for nearly three decades. Mm -hmm. And for two decades, you've been the go-to man for the company in Asia and North Africa. You've been the cha chairman and managing director of Unilever Bangladesh, chairman and CEO of Unilever Philippines, chairman of Unilever North Africa, Middle East, and for the past 10 years, you've been the head of Unilever's business in India and South Asia. You're also a member of Unilever's global executive board. An outstanding member of Indian corporate fraternity, you're an independent director on the board of Air India, a director on the board of Indian School of Business, and a member of the South Asian Advisory Board of the Harvard Business School, and a member of the board of Breach Candy Hospital Trust. An inveterate organizer, you also chair the coalition of Indian and multinational companies in India called Vikasa. It's great to have you with us here today for a look at the attitude and experiences that have shaped your success and your belief system that drives you. I'm sure our young audience will draw on your story and advice in charting their own path to success and glory. Thank you for joining us and a very warm welcome to you. This session is about sharing experiences and thoughts and we will devote time to a free flowing conversation though we'll aim to close the session on time as planned. We will start with a talk by our speaker about his life, journey, career, inspirations, lessons and beliefs, or anything else that he may wish to educate us on. With these words, it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Sanjeev Mehta to tell us a little bit about his journey and his take on work and life. Over to you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Nikhil. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, absolutely delighted to be with all of you and uh, share a bit about my life's journey, my perspectives in life. And, uh, I, I, you know, Nikhil was taking about life changing. That's a very onerous responsibility. Uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, I'm capable of uh, changing lives, but I'll give you my perspective on many things. Yeah, many of you must have read uh, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, you would recall those who have done a conversation between Alice and uh, Jessa Cat, in uh, where, uh, in many ways, it depicts what each one of us must face at least once in life. And uh, you know, you remember that conversation. Would you tell me, please, which way I am ought to go from here? Uh, said uh, Alice to the cat. And the cat says, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. Yeah, we are all faced with choices. Life is about choices. And the path we choose in many ways defines who we are and what we become. What's important is the purpose that drives our choice in life, be it personal or professional. I'm absolutely honored to speak to the young minds, the future of a country. And uh, 
I, I'm not going to tell you about which direction to take in your career or what will help you get to your destination. But talk about the road I have traveled. And I'm hopeful that in some way, this might help you chart your own roadmap. Now, my journey began in Bombay in what I describe as a quintessential middle-class family. My parents, they were migrants from what is now West Punjab, which is part of Pakistan. And they came to India during partition. And the values of hard work, sincerity, integrity, and love and pride for the nation were imbibed from my parents. And uh, something that they taught me very importantly is to be authentic and to be confident. My father was a career reserve banker, and the best time during the day was a dinner table. And in our home, the dinner was uh, mandatory for all to attend at the same time. Yeah. And our dad would regale us stories about the economy, about finance, about the bank, about what is happening internationally. And that, in many ways, influenced my thinking. Now, looking at the life my dad led and uh, very ably supported by my homemaker mother is uh, my family taught me do the harder right than the easier wrong. Yeah, that again has something which is very deeply embedded in my own self and in my siblings. And hopefully that's being imbibed by our daughters as well. Now, I, like many of my age and even the youth of today, wanted to be a cricketer. And uh, those were the days when the best school for playing cricket in India was Bhadan New High School. Yeah, the school where Mr. Vijay Merchant played and Nari Contractor played. So I or two had joined that school primarily to become a cricketer. And I played for the Child Shield. But the school was so bloody good in cricket that I did not get a chance to play for the senior team, Aris Shield. And so that's when I decided that uh, perhaps I do not have uh, as much talent for cricket as I had the passion for cricket. And so influenced by my dad, I decided to become a chartered accountant. Now, how this was reinforced at me, because in my school, uh, we had in the grade 10, always we used to undergo an aptitude test. And it came out very clear. I was very good in math. And it became very clear that accounting, finance, that is something which I'm very suited for. It only reinforced my thinking. So after uh, clearing my CA entrance, after the 12th grade, uh, I started doing my articleship. And this is where I would believe I fell in love with business. Yeah. So while I'm a chartered accountant by training, I'm not an archetype accountant. I love business. Yeah. And that is where also I developed an eye for details and also the habit of being very inquisitive, very curious. And uh, I would often, when I used to go for audits, ask a whole lot of questions, more about understanding the business. And uh, many times, uh, you know, looking back, it might have sounded silly. But then uh, remember, it's better to be silly once than be ignorant all your life. So that is something which has again stayed with me. And I'm very curious about consumers. I want to know everything about their life, their behaviors, their habits, their attitudes. And uh, I'll also talk about serendipity. You know, I was fortunate. I was amongst the toppers in chartered accountancy. So we had a lot of corporations reach out to you and inviting whether we would join to want to join the selection process. And I had zeroed in on two corporations. And they were of equal size. One was a Unilever group of companies and the other was Union Carbide. And I was influenced by the fact that both these corporations invested in people to train them, develop them. And Unilever at that time was not one entity. There were several entities. There was Hindustan Lever, as it was then called. There was Lipton India. There was Brookborn India. There was Ponds India. There was Jum Duma. And they, in their wisdom, decided to post me in Kolkata with Lipton India. 
now guys don't get me wrong i'm a mumbai kar i love kolkata i visit there often but at that age i was very clear i wanted to be in mumbai and union carbide the corporate office was in mumbai so it didn't take me much to decide that i'll join mumbai uh, union carbide in mumbai and that's how my professional journey started and i joined what was then a very sexy function called corporate finance and after 6 months the chairman of the company a wonderful gentleman i was still in touch with him uh, of just about 2 uh, years back he passed away a great guy he called me one day and said sanjeev i want you to learn business so i said absolutely wonderful mr gokhale uh, even i would love to learn it so he said join management audit and he could make out from my face that it fell and he said why you're not happy i said mr gokhale i've done audit during my article ship that's not what i'm interested in so he says no 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 that's not the audit what in management audit here this would be about looking at business models looking at different businesses you know carbon was a conglomerate there was a battery product division there was a chemicals and plastic division the first naphtha cracker was set up by union carbide there was a agriculture products division where pesticides were made there was carbons and metal division there was a marine products division he says you will learn different businesses so i said what mr gokhale if i don't enjoy he said drop me a message and i'll take you back in corporate i thought that was a good deal and i started and i worked in different businesses and loved it and then i was sent abroad to the parent company in connecticut danbury and that uh, was a time when the infamous bhopal gas tragedy happened many of you are youngsters may not know but this is still being touted as perhaps the worst industrial disaster and uh, after a few days i was asked to come back and join the crisis team and i wondered i'm not a chemical engineer i've never worked in the agri products division in bhopal why i'm being sent there but anyway not to question here i landed the young man in bhopal and became a part of a small crisis team which was managing this mammoth crisis thankfully those were not the days of 24 by 7 news yeah so the news was still coming through all india radio and doordarshan and the newspapers and uh, anyway the crisis was of huge magnitude and uh, i was the youngest member of the team and my job was coordinating meetings investigation was going on by the cbi the lawyers were here the union carbide lawyers the union carbide india lawyers the government uh, investigation team from csir and my job was uh, that was the time it was very very yeah just imagine it's it, the crisis of that magnitude and you were a focus of the whole world and uh, i believe that was the time when a boy became a man and uh, you know i that was the time also i learned is what it means to be a corporate citizen what it means corporate responsibility yeah is what it means uh, between a law of contract and law of torts and what it means when politics comes into business you know that's a story i can regale you with with hours on end what happened why it happened but that was a great learning experience for me and after being in bhopal for a year and a half and uh, seeing litigation seeing investigation there was a time when i used to fly down to us every month because of the court case that was on over there in the district court of new york is i was moved as the finance or commercial head of chemicals and plastic business now i just mentioned to you a while back that was india's first naphtha cracker an integrated chemical plant and here i was posted over there as a head of commercial and i remember my first management meeting where they were talking about the brent crude price and whether they would make a fillin out of naphtha they'll make it out of alcohol whether they make all the c2 c3 streams carbon streams whether they'll make benzene or toluene or xylene 
and uh, what grade of polyethylene will make, the international prices, they were Greek and Latin for me. So I went to my boss and said, uh, there were wonderful boss of mine, Mr. Bose. And I said, Mr. Bose, I want three weeks leave. His immediate reaction was, Sanjeev, are you getting married? I said, no, Mr. Bose, I'm not getting married. I'll be at the factory. You can reach me in Chembur at the factory. If you choose to, those were not the days when we had a mobile phone. So you had to call through the landlines. And what I did is I took the three weeks leave and invested completely in understanding the business of chemicals and plastic. I used to go home perhaps only to take a shower and change my clothes. Otherwise, entire time I used to spend at the factory, tracing from the time the naphtha flow in from underground pipelines, to the measuring it through the flow meters, going through each production process, sitting with engineers, sitting with chemists, understanding chemistry, understanding process. And at the end of three weeks, I had a reasonably good understanding to understand when we have discussions, what it matters. So remember something, there is no shortcut to detail. Now, after I then got a chance to handle what was perhaps the largest divestiture in corporate India, because it was a hazardous unit. Union Carbide, after what happened in Bhopal, decided to exit all hazardous units. So I handled uh, the <laughs> divestiture of a going concern, which was again a massive experience. And uh, <coughs> after that, I moved to sales and marketing. And sales and marketing, I again moved because of my love for business. And I remember very vividly, I wanted to understand uh, 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 the rural distribution. Yeah, I under wanted to understand the rural market. And there's a district in India which is the Bastar district. Yeah, it is in Chhattisgarh and it is one of the most backward districts in the country. Yeah, there were mainly tribals over there and there was a period of time when insurgency was very rampant, but uh, this wasn't so when I was there. So I spent three weeks in a van sales, together with a van sales. And those were the days when we would travel from village to village Hawking ever ready products, batteries and flashlights, and uh, understanding what rural market went. We used to sleep in dhabas. Yeah, we used to take a shower in a well, village well, or by the side of a pond. And but that was the time I understood what it means that if there is a difference in two rupees in a nine fifty battery case, how the stocks would move from Delhi to Mumbai or from a wholesale market or how it would flow down through the route to market to uh, deep rural areas. Now, the I always maintain what Benjamin Franklin had rightly said, that tell me and I forget, teach me and I might remember, involve me and I learn. So this is a philosophy, again, something which I've kept with all my life. The best way is not about testing the water with your toes, but a full body immersion. That is when you get into really grips of what it means. And in reality, the actual learning never stops. Yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't have to wait for a learning opportunity. You create it and commit yourself to it. And uh, uh, the other important bit one must understand that you would have seen how a chartered accountant by training is uh, within his first few years is worked in corporate finance and management audit and crisis in chemicals and plastic division and sales and marketing. Because if you have to chase your passion, you have to take risk. And many times we do not take risk because of the fear of failure. So don't let the fear of failure stop you from taking action. You know, many times the fear of failure prevents us and it reduces our potential success in life. Now, can you ever succeed without taking risk? No, never. Business is about risk and risk entails failure. So if you want your career, your profession to pursue at a good pace, then be ready to take risk. 
And uh, other is don't worry about failures. The best way is to learn through failures. I always talk about uh, uh, productive failure and unproductive success. Unproductive success is when you don't know why the heck you have succeeded. And, product, uh, and productive failure is when you understand why you have failed, you invite the learnings and ensure that you don't fail again. Now, I also believe that uh, why challenges and failures are so important. Just like fire is the test of gold, adversity is the test of mankind. Yeah. And without going through failures, you would not be a strong individual. So you need courage, you need conviction, you need discipline, and you need precision. And you have to live with this if you have to pursue the kind of journey you want. Now, at that stage, after I, when I was in sales and marketing, uh, Union, Union Carbide decided to leave India, again, because of the risk associated with uh, uh, Bhopal. And that was the time when Unilever again approached me. And they offered me a commercial job, and I told them the... VP of HR that, no, thank you. I would want a business job. And I'm not looking of going back into accounting and finance. So, you, you know, we had a nice, I remember a nice lunch at Bombay Gym. And then I said, thank you. After a few weeks, he again called me. He said, Sanjeev, would you be interested in, we are just coming onshore in Middle East. Would you be interested in joining our international card? And I my immediate reaction was that, hey, man, Dubai, only electricians and plumbers go. That was not the Dubai of today. Eh? This we are talking about 30 years back. So my immediate reaction was, no, Mr. Nanda, I'm sorry. I'm not. So he was persistent. After a week, he again called me. He said, Dubai works on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. The weekly off was Thursday and Friday. Then he said, why don't you go over the weekend? Take a look. So I accepted it. Then I went down to Dubai, took my Emirates flight for the first time, landed in Dubai. There was an English gentleman called Craig Sharples waiting for me to uh, receive me. He took me to the <laughs> that time. There used to be a country club over there, and it was a sand golf course. And he took me there. We had lunch over there. Then in the evening, I had uh, a tea with another director, dinner with another director. That's how the two days went by. And the way they treated me was absolutely exemplary. And I could see the excitement. You know, those were the days when Union, you, Unilever had just come on shore. And we didn't use the word then, but it was virtually a startup. We were setting up factories, setting up JV agreements, setting up distribution, entering new product categories. And the way Unilever had done is they'd got managers from 30 odd countries to come and set up the operations in Middle East. And there was a huge palpable excitement. So I started that journey. And we had just got married. My wife, too, is a chartered accountant. She was a corporate banker with HSBC. So I told her, you don't come along. Let me go. And uh, but within a month, I said, it's a fabulous place. Great company. Yeah, you can come and join. And then she also came down. Then she also started a career in Dubai. That's how my journey with Unilever started. Now, after a few years, I was given a chance and offered an option of going to Bangladesh. And Bangladesh uh, was a company in crisis. We had one of our large businesses losing massive market shares. And my boss, an American gentleman called Tom Stevens, he called me and said, said Sanjeev, would you like to go there as a member of the board? And uh, he said, the business is in a deep shit and uh, the place is tough. And if you want to say no, perfectly fine. We'll find another job for you anywhere in the Unilever world. So Mona and I discussed, by that time, we had our twin daughter, Nana and Roshni. They were still very small. Uh, my wife said, why don't you go and take a look at it? So as a family, we went on a recce trip. 
and that was the worst flood in the history of bangladesh as a plane was landing in dhaka the only thing we could see was the strip everything else was underwater anyway we took a rickety plane and flew down to chitagong where we were headquartered and uh, the business was in a pretty abysmal shape and uh, we said okay uh, let's take a look around there was an uh, englishman who was the chairman then he gave us a good perspective people were leaving in droves no one wants to be in a losing business so there's a story in itself then we went back and on the way back uh, i said mona you in the place of stuff you might have to give up your career is uh, let's stop the idea of going to bangladesh my wife said why do you want to do that where in your career will you get a chance to turn around a business in deep trouble and if you do it well new career opportunities will open up for you so inspired by her we took the plunge and we landed in bangladesh so in two years time we turned around the business and then i became the chairman of the business and from there for the last 21 years i've had a wonderful opportunity to lead unilever businesses in bangladesh and philippines and north africa middle east which was a cluster of over 20 countries and then to the uh, basically to india which is clearly the crown jewel of unilever now again i would say is that risk is a very important part and uh, you have to be very cognizant about how you take a considered risk i'll give you a story now when i was in north africa middle east that was the time when the arab spring happened i wonder whether you guys remember it and uh, the business was going through a pretty tough time you know it started from a fruit vendor in tunis and the whole region was up in flames and uh, that is where uh, we had a very pretty big business in egypt and the whole country was in flames and even the police had vacated the barracks and we said uh, first job is to look after our people so we went to the wholesalers and we said that give us whatever food grains you have we picked up the food grains brought it to the factories we collected money from the distributor they were very happy to give the cash to us because they had no place to deposit the money and then we made packets gave it to the people the banking system had closed down we told our people anyone who runs out of food come to the factory and collect the food from us this was the factory on the outskirts of cairo 6th of october city and uh, you know we took amazing care of our people and it was not surprising when hooligans were burning down factories our factories were protected 24 by 7 by our own workers who willingly took shifts in shifts took the responsibility of looking after our factory and not surprisingly we were the first to start operations now the philosophy is if you look after your people the people look after you that's an extremely important thing which has helped me in good stead in my entire career and even during the pandemic that's the philosophy that we have practiced and uh, one had a fabulous uh, innings in philippines in north africa middle east and then i got a chance now in between my global ceo had offered me a job when the arab spring was on to become president of southeast asia now i remember that conversation i was in beirut and he was in the us when we were having that conversation and he asked me sanjeev uh, can you move to southeast asia and as told paul paul you know my region is up in flames there's a captain of the ship how can i move now it would be wrong it would be like abdicating my responsibilities so paul and i discussed for over an hour and then uh, very grudgingly he accepted it that is not an opportune time but again is it was good i did not take it because then i got a chance to come back home after 21 years to lead india and in india it's been a fabulous journey you know nine years back our market cap was 17 billion dollars now it is 78 billion dollars so we've added over 60 billion dollars as market cap in india which in its own right 
would have been amongst the first 10 most valuable companies, the Delta market cap. And uh, there are many things which have gone into making HUL even bigger and better and greater. And uh, that, uh, you know, perhaps we leave it for another time. But uh, the important bit is I would leave it with you that when you look at value creation, look at it from a long-term lens. You have to anchor it on three axes. One is growth. Second is distinctive capabilities, which are hard to replicate. And the third is high performance and not. Yeah. And uh, when you are looking at, that's what makes a high performing business. And when you're looking at value creation, again, focus on three important bits. Yeah. It's the growth, your portfolio is how do you create categories of the future? The second axis is margin. And the third axis is capital velocity. Yeah. Or the return on capital employed. The other important bit which drives me is not the valuation or the size of the business, is uh, the timeless purpose of a company like Unilever and HUL. And uh, in my case, I'm so lucky that my own values are intertwined with the organization's value. And uh, this is a company which has taken risk with me, given me huge opportunity, and uh, my is uh, I feel it's my duty to ensure that I never let the company down. 